I hope the evening finds you well as though a hole with water. Says I, host Eric, host of Talking with Famous People, and purveyor of the good news. Have you heard the good news? Hello, Gilded Garden. So, I got some comments on the INFP Justice video, which I made. I don't remember if it was titled that or if it just something I talked about or what, but I got a fair amount of, let's say, ahems from some INFPs. I got an ahem. I got a ahem. I got a, excuse me. <coughs> and a... <coughs> Yeah, you got one of those as well. So, one of the more, I thought, summationary of the comments that I got about it was, let me go to this thing that I'm going to. Uh, it said something along the lines of, INFP justice is understanding. So, I wanted to talk a little bit about what that means and extent to which, uh, let me get rid of this one and the extent to which that's an accurate or fair or reasonable assessment of things. Um, what am I looking for? I am looking for a special someone, somebody to tell me that I'm grand. I'm looking for the comments, that's what I'm looking for. And away we go. So, the thing is, the general consensus was that, for example, I don't have, or even me and Spacey don't have, a very good understanding of how FI interfaces with morality. So let me look at this one. This comment. Mutant Macrophage says, So CS just seems to think FI is the only function capable of moral thinking, and you guys seem to think FI is the only function capable of moral thinking in a way that is guaranteed to be flawed. Um, and that's not what I said at all. I mean, any kind of single metric for moral thinking is going to be inadequate. And I also wanted to read this. There are plenty of economists to the left of you that are not INFPs. Time and again, you seem to equate TI with free market ideologies and FI with those not in your neoliberal camp. I'm not a neoliberal, okay? I don't. There's no reason to call opposition to. You know, okay, well, I'll get into it in a second. <laughs> um, shout out to Spacey for pointing out we're not all rationally challenged idiots. SJW idiots. Uh, fuck no, I'm an INFP and I'm very supportive of capitalism. But there are more things, there are some things more important than a competitive market life. If someone doesn't have food or water, there is an, that is an emergency. Capitalism is great, but every system has its failings. And if the system betrays its purposes, in this case, to serve humanity and life, then I think it is acceptable to make appropriate correction. Okay. So, um, and then more over here where it says, oh, and after the justice thing, yes, you have to remember that people are people, if not in an emotion sense, at least in a practical sense, there are always doors open to people. You can take away some one's freedom to go through them by throwing them in a jail cell, but even then there are options, limited ones, but options, and they're usually ones that will only serve to make the situation worse. Getting back to people, great, do what you got to do, but sometimes people aren't given life sentences. There's a possibility they can do whatever they did again. I've got to consider that whole, not just the individual. I would love to believe that if I just give people a chance, they can be good, and I know in some sense they're going to hold on to that, but given the circumstances of humanity, it would be just, it would just be enough not to have it happen again. What does tripping someone up accomplish? Okay, so this is the typical INFP sort of response to this, and I wanted to address these sort of comments directly because there's lots of them here. Um, Eric, you're off base here. INFPs are not justice avoiding oblivious. It's not that they aren't willing to fight the bully or stop them. It's that they want to learn what created the problem in order in said person to stop it from reoccurring in the tribe later. Listen to this and focus on the end of fear and pity. INFPs prioritize prevention through understanding, at least when it comes to people and negative behavior. There are many 
All right. So, um, what's my takeaway of all this? Don't I, I? I don't know exactly. I don't remember exactly what I said in that video. But I will tell you that my first my first response to all these sort of comments is don't straw man me. I, Do I need to move? No, you're fine. I'm gonna sit right here. This would be better. Don't straw man me. It's like I acknowledge in the thing that the moral equation when understood by INFPs is well understood. Um, the point I was making is that they have the particularist element of justice, as indicated by that commenter, right? Who's focused on the person's experience and what's really going to happen with that person, the sort of a TE frame of reference, and thinks the retribution isn't really worth much. Pays a little lip service, but doesn't, doesn't give it any real... Um, in real weight. The thing is, I think INFPs don't get is that for people who are not SE polar, there is a genuine need often to experience the natural consequences of one's behavior in order to reset to reset your frame on it. So you're doing someone a disservice by always letting them get away with shit. And I'm not saying that the other thing is you're you're not acknowledging that there are some individuals who cannot be who cannot be trusted even if they're being honest so it's like this person is being honest they are remorseful they do actually think they're they're going to learn from this but then later on they change their mind or something else happens or whatever it's, but it's not just a a consequentialist frame here that makes it to, that makes it necessary to have independent justice independent of all the particulars of the situation there needs to be uniformity across um, across instances, if you're going to have societal justice at the law and order level. So, in that regard, we have to follow some standards and rules that may end up in instances, individual instances, having a net negative impact on justice, but that overall are necessary in order to have a net positive impact on justice. Restorative justice might be an answer to that. I mean, I'm not I don't want to let any fucker off the hook. Okay. So restorative justice and retributive justice are different only really in the sense that restorative justice is to presumably is the civil aspect of things. It's like the liability aspect, right? If I steal from you and destroy, let's say I steal from you all these flat screen TVs, then when I get caught, I have to give them back. If I've sold them, I have to give you the money for them. And if, um, I don't have the money. I just have to pay you back what the economic cost to you because that's the that's the civil liability or the um, fiscal liability associated with doing the crime. But there's also a criminal liability that's separate from that. Namely, if we just made every criminal pay back what they stole exactly, and that was it, then there'd be no recognition of the harms done by being victimized by a crime. And there'd be no recognition of the fact that there ought not be an imposition on the property owner to reclaim their property from the thief. Um, there ought be instead an imposition upon the thief not to steal. And so we need society to reflect those kind of sensible norms or else people who aren't FI or TI people, TIFE people, they're not as driven by their FI. And, and so they need things to make sense. They need morality to make sense for not just to be an instinct. There's, there's additionally this thing that says, you know, it's understanding that, that I, the key to all INFP justice is understanding. Sometimes we need to understand less and do more. And sometimes what's necessary is not to fully understand the circumstance, is to get swift justice. Justice delayed is not justice at all. Okay, but then would you consider Dark Star? You got to be, you got to address the real, the real key division here. Do you want restorative justice to be only form of retributive justice? Namely, if um, if the person has what has been taken from them fully restored, is that adequate? Or are you going to acknowledge? I mean, or do you want to include in that, let's say? Um, the emotional pain or the fact that now you have anxiety about something or you keep getting triggered or whatever. Um, 
do you want that to be included in the restorative justice? Because how can you restore that? You can't really restore that. You can only... Well, do you know what uh, restorative justice is, the way that he's... Uh, that's what I'm trying to clarify, what he means by it. Oh, they literally, it, it implies some kind of direct interaction, basically, between the victim and the perpetrator. So, so basically, what, basically they, it's more of like a, you guys talk it out, you know, after whatever... So you know, who's restoring what for whom? Well, the person will be paid back, and then the rest of it, through restorative justice, I think, is assumed to be more of an emotional process than, like, a, you know, a legal process. Uh, um, okay. Um, so rather than saying, because the victim was damaged in some intangible way, rather than try to assign a monetary value to it or something, right, as additional payment... Restorative justice would be like, well, let's see if the perpetrator can actually, you know, go up and apologize and, and talk it out with them and have that sort of deal. I mean, I guess it's like if you murder my my toddler, I'm not going to be interested in hearing your apology. I want to see somebody torture you to death, ideally. But that's not something I'm going to get to see. Nor something I would probably <laughs> actually affirm if given the choice to actually make it happen. But I absolutely want to take solace in the fact that this person is locked in a cage, you know, and and feel some satisfaction at, at knowing that that person is hopefully suffering. Hmm. You know? Because, well, an FI person would be much less inclined to feel that way, I think. Right, and I think, I, yeah. my, my, my exception I take with INFPs is they don't seem to acknowledge or understand that there is there is legitimate validity in, um, in vengeance, and in making justice right by crushing your enemy. Now, it shouldn't be disproportionate, right? But... Yeah, it's funny how he's he's looking at what, what TE has accomplished, right, with the punishment. Right. You gotta... I think a complete understanding of justice includes those TE elements. Right. But it foremost recalls that justice is about the way that the law can approximate our universal moral codes and protect the negative rights of the citizens. That is what the law is supposed to do. It's to prevent some citizens from violating the negative rights of other citizens. Well, it's obviously expanded way beyond that. So wait a second. Yes. Do you think there should be punishment in order to like set an example? Like, What would you say is the there's punishment the to um, to level the metaphysical ledger. Okay. There, there's an inherent state of equilibrium in your life. When you are traumatized by a victimizing thing, such as having your rights violated, it disrupts the equilibrium of your life. And it is absolutely appropriate to um, exact from your victimizer some sort of equilibrium restoring otherwise arbitrary punishment. No, Eric's right, but minor offenses are not something you usually see jail time for, either. Dark Star, you and I are in complete right. agreement about, yeah, say, traffic tickets, drug laws, all right. kinds of shit that I think should, the, the courts have nothing to do with. I'm opposed to plea bargaining in general. Every fucking criminal trial should see a jury trial. If, if in fact, the criminal justice system had to provide jury trials for everybody who's been charged with a crime, they would have to do something about the ridiculous... Like in splay of unnecessary laws and over enforcement and, and unnecessary involvement in the court system. And infractions, for example, have this huge impact on large communities of people who end up with warrants for their arrest because they don't take care of some infraction. And now all of a sudden they're they have an actual crime that they're committing, namely not paying your ticket, which isn't really still a crime because who are you committing a crime against there? At least there's somebody you could name, naming the state of California or whatever. But um, that shit, that shit is fucking horrible. And the way that the way that a bail is set up, for example, the Constitution says no unreasonable bail and no cruel and unusual punishment and whatever. Uh, but lots of people will spend a long ass time in jail awaiting their speedy trial. Because of all the machinations of the courts, pushing it back, pushing it back. They can't afford bail or they're denied bail. They're functionally pressured 
by the slowest torture ever, sitting in jail forever and ever and ever, into signing a plea agreement. So it's it's shockingly evil and wrong. But for people who commit actual crimes against actual people, crimes are against somebody. You should never say he committed a crime without including the propositional phrase against blah. You commit crimes against either person or property. Absolutely in the war on drugs. The federal government has no business whatsoever, no constitutional authority to have anything to do with drugs, medicine, or anything like that. Now, I understand that the actuality of the federal government is way not what the Constitution says, and we have to deal with what case law says, not what the law says. Fine. Even so, there, you, it's reasonable to think you can get the courts to maybe go walk it back on uh, walk it back on drug laws. And it's here called them victimless crimes. I prefer to call them consensual crimes because it focuses on the fact that this behavior is actually consensual, but it's been criminalized. Build a garden, point out. I had a buddy that sat in jail for a week for an unpaid ticket. Like, who actually gains anything out of the situation? The criminal justice freaking rank and file. The rank and file. The wardens, the guards, the public yeah. defenders, the prosecutors, they all benefit from it. Right. They all get paid. That's their freaking yeah. job is to turn human beings into misery for money. I know, Joe, 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 Shabba did it right. She says, the amount of laws against minor shit in our country would have most people breaking one law or another most hours don't say. Exactly. You cannot walk out of your house on any given day without breaking multiple laws, probably. Yeah, that's why a lot of people, especially certain types of people, will very easily learn to just go fuck it when it comes to most laws, right? <laughs> right. Because most laws people don't, don't have a clear, a clear articulation of which laws are just and which right. laws are not and why. And apply it consistently. Very few people have that. So it's really how much trouble am I going to get in for this? How likely am I to get caught? Who am I going to hurt? Like, Absolute justice is one thing, and forgiveness is somewhat another, but they need to be in cooperation for things to work and also overlap. Most government proceedings as well, though. Look, I think Jesus was an INFP. And Maybe? yeah, but I mean, actually, I don't, I don't know. I've said before, I've joked before, he was an INFP, but. I know if he makes more sense because it would says, make sense. what do you do when somebody hits you? You know, turn the other cheek. And who was that? He was who was that sin throw the first stone. Nobody throw any stones at this person. Um, you know, that's good and everything, but it's uh, for like you know, if you are a if you are a country that's like England in World War II, for example. The Nazis are saying, okay, we're going to take over Europe and we're going to come take over Britain now. And Britain wasn't like, well, we'll turn the other cheek. And they shouldn't have been. I, I feel like this is all a metaphor. Like, he's really not trying to tell you to not defend yourself. Uh, right. I mean, I think his point is, and I, I see it in my daily life, I see it in my relationships, I see it on the internet, I see wherever, is that most of the time when people are acting badly, they're acting out of their pain and damage. Right. And they are not being malicious. And if you really want to teach them to stop being angry and combative or something, then don't angrily combat. Um, yeah, I'll use the... the uh, torch to uh, <laughs> to call on to call on reporters in a press conference and be like you, Tony. Yeah, you. Loki is not an ENTP. Loki is not an ENTP in the movies and the movie in the MCU movies. He's not an ENTP. I don't know what he is, but he's. He's, an, he's like an INFP, I think. He's a nasty INFP. Uh, but uh, he's too... You can see his FI through everything. 
that Thor Ragnarok is unbelievably good. Stunningly, shockingly, delighting me out of my seat every second. Good, it, it, incredibly good. It's just like, wow, they made such a good movie. Well, look, Dawson K. Nobody's disputing that the firebomb in Dresden was, um, was the low point of the Allied campaign. You know, yeah, the real Loki might be an ENT. The Loki from the from the Norse myths might be an ENT, but he's probably the original ENTP. Yeah, but Loki in the movies, it, that guy's FI. That character's FI comes through constantly. Um, I mean, the thing is. You sometimes in life you're afforded a choice. It, imagine if you were a pioneer in the old America times, right? And you you had your homestead out in like freaking Kansas before there's anybody out there that was far west of the country gone or something. The notion that you would not be armed in your cabin there with your family, you got your wife and your two young children, and you're trying to eke out a living farm in this land, and you got your freaking ox and you got your mule or whatever. There's zero chance anybody would think it was even remotely sane to not be armed in the cabin like that. And if some sort of highwayman came by in the middle of the night, imagine if you're out in the dark in Kansas and it's in fucking, there's no electricity and there's no phones, there's nothing like that, and it's the middle of the night, you got your family there, and you know, anytime you could be attacked by bears or you know, whatever, and some Indians ride up and start like with fire, start trying to light your barn on fire, you go out and fucking shoot them. Of course you do. It's your job as a man to protect your family. That's where the the justification for self-defense really comes from, right? It's a duty. It's a duty to protect your loved ones or to die trying. You're not going to, you know, it's like Attila the Hunt may capture my wife and children alive, but only over my dead body. And so there's a lot of dead men in history who stood up to Attila the Hunt or Genghis, the Khan, Genghis Khan and died as a process. I'd rather do that, and I think it's more noble to do that, protecting your family, than to allow yourself to be enslaved and your family and your life ruined and all that kind of shit. Dark Star is a she. S-H-E. Okay? Not a dude. D-U-D. I asked you about the other night. Seventh and eighth is what, according to your definition? Seventh is polar. Eighth is, I call it, sub-instrumental or unconscious, um, unconscious, undervalued tool function. So your eighth slot's instrumental to your first slot, which is instrumental to your third. So for me, SE serves NE, which serves FE. Um, and it's about the same strength, quote unquote, as your sixth, but in a different context. Eighth, you're actually using your life to make your life better. Sixth, you just demonstrate it. You just sort of show it all the time. Um, seventh is polar. You're blind to it, and it doesn't adequately enter into your calculations generally. So you think factors outside of an individual's control affects his or her actions to a degree? For instance, people who are raised with parents can crash more likely to be the same. Well, sure. It is absolutely true that each of us as a moral agent exists in his or her own circumstances. And some of those circumstances are more challenging than others. The thing is, society can't differentiate between those things. Society can't say, um, because you were you have a more challenging set of circumstances as a moral agent, you are no longer accountable. Because that's another way of denying that person their agency and saying, you, we, it is unreasonable society to expect you to fulfill your duty as a moral agent. It's not unreasonable society to expect every human being to do that, except those who are mentally unfit. For example, my mother, the other day, when I looked, turned around for a second, I was in the front yard with her, turned around for a second, she walked over to the neighbor's house and took their mail out of their mailbox. Now, stealing mail from a mailbox is a federal crime. It's a felony. I don't think my mother should be arrested and charged with a felony for stealing mail because, first of all, I grabbed it quickly from her and put it back in the mailbox. But second of all, she has no fucking idea what she's doing. She has dementia. If you are aware of what you're doing and aware, at least in some sense, that it's wrong or that it is violatory, then that's all society needs to know. 
everybody everybody has their own set of challenges or whatever you know it's like it's like driving a car everybody has a responsibility to drive a car and not rear end the person in front of them you might say but some people are not very good reflexes like spacey and he might get into a crash because he's stopped paying attention at some point and starts thinking about stuff or whatever well then he's gonna have to not drive if he can't not crash that's it i mean it's like the society can only be so fair so particular they have to have standards and they have to have rules that apply to everybody if an infp is raised with se doms or se types would they become better at se simply to survive or adapt as a young child until adulthood i don't know hard to say <laughs> I think they grow to hate it more. Things you're forced to do that you don't want to do in childhood, you grow to just hate. Eric does understand INTP pretty damn well. Who is Dr. PhD? What you just said is essentially completely untrue. INFPs do get bothered. The only way we wouldn't get bothered is if we didn't have a pie. And while we usually back down, that isn't always so. Who's Dr. PhD? I don't see any Dr. PhD. Uh, are you talking about me? I don't think I said that stuff. Did I? Howdy. Zaylin Black's here. ISTJ in the his and brows. Or SJW is more FI or FE. Um, more FI, I think. But you can get FE doms, too. Well, they need... They sort of you need some FE doms kind of mixed in there in order to kind of enforce that that feeling like that most people think what the FI people think, sort of. Right. Well, I mean the thing that FI if you don't agree with them, then you're you know abnormal. The thing that FE and FI people are gonna share is a tendency to embrace candidates that they believe have good intentions and care about people a lot. So one of the best ways to demonstrate that you have good intentions to care about people a lot is to favor a bunch of poorly designed, ill-advised, and harmful social policies. Because people who focus on wanting more money for social policies, for example, or in social inequity or social injustice, what are they really saying? They're saying, there's a problem, we have to do something. It's called an inherency argument. There's a problem, it won't fix itself, so we have to do something. But that's as far as any of them ever get in the argumentation. They assume that the actual part where you go and figure out what it is you're going to do to help the poor people, that if we just work together and figure it out and really try to make it happen, it'll work fine. They don't, they, don't, they don't understand that that's not the way processes work in politics at all. And they don't understand the psycho psychological impacts of shit. When you, it's not your money, you know it's not your money. And you treat it less uh, seriously. So it's like, if I have a stipend of up to $1,100 from the government to spend on whatever, I'm going to try to spend every fucking cent of it, right? There's no way I'm going to go, well, I could save a few hundred dollars by going for this one. Because it's not my money, it's taxpayer money. FI doms don't understand this. They don't understand the actual mechanics of the way human beings interact with each other in the world. They don't understand that... Um, that you can't, you basically cannot rely on intentionality to judge. That the most well intentioned people in the world are responsible for most of the most hor horrific things that have ever happened in human history. They begin with really, really good intentions and really caring a lot and having a lot of conviction about what's going to help people. And they end with that same person shoving a gun in people's face and forcing them to do shit they don't want to do. So that's the, that's the issue there, you know? It's like, all the INFPs feel as though they have a clear understanding of what's the most moral thing to have happen, but they don't get that public policy is not a moral way to make that happen. It, it, that public policy has only one moral indication, it's negative. It must prevent and protect the citizens from rights violations. Yeah, I'm Italian. I meant the rest of it. Don't pretend that's all he said. That's all who said. I don't, are you talking about me, Fiji Kids Katarina? I don't know what you're talking about. Hello again, Matt Rabahi. Ma'am Bialik and the girl from Unnatural Vegan seem INFP, the one Sosionics talks about. 
I don't know who those people are. If you disagree with them, they'll harm you. Is it F I or F E? Uh, it's F I. F I don't, don't understand elements of F I. Who said that? Me? Did I say that? F E basically, as evil as F E could possibly be, it still understands how much of a PR disaster it would be to, you know, hurt people. Physically. Yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah, you're always going to lose that argument. See, I always think of those terms, too. It's like, if I do or say X, will I be able to win the argument after the fact? And if the answer is no, I won't do it. I mean, occasionally I'll I'll get so upset that I'll say shit to Kimberly that I wish I hadn't because then I'll lose the argument. Every time I give her any am ammunition that's legitimate, she'll win the argument with it. Eric, do you think Susie's right? Do you think I'm exotic? Well... I think you're exotic. I think you are a little bit swarthy. I think you have a, the piercing gaze of an ancient Greek with the pursed lips of a Babylonian. Yeah, all people are ethnic. And the ears of a Mesopotamian, circa fert Fertile Crescent years. Adriatic vibe? He's Adriatic below the belt. Mm -hmm. Now he's the one backing down. I know if he went. I don't. I wish I knew what you were talking about. Um, F E will follow F I once F I has established itself as the dominating value value system. F E doesn't create value; it just follows F I creates. But look, F I F E does validate based on um, intentions. F E will use whether or not an F E person thinks you're well intentioned to make decisions about whether your ideas are right. Um, Supernova doesn't really believe in mercy. I do. I mean, I, I, I'm a person who advocates for infinite second chances, you know, but um, only in some circumstances, and it's not really true. It's just sort of as long as you don't do violate violatory shit. If you do, there's still second chances, but you've got to redeem yourself by being fully accountable, expressing remorse, and experiencing the natural consequences of it, whatever it might be. Which type is the one that if you ask them, they don't tell you how they really feel? The one that only smiles and says the politically correct thing. So. ESFJ? It wouldn't be politically correct, really, but it would be socially correct. Martial arts, true at Matt. BDSM function theory. Hmm. The, uh, any introvert does that. Yes. yes. See, I mean, the thing is about FI and public policy. Well, FI ignoring also kind of helps with that because they may not even really know how they feel personally. <coughs> So you don't really know until they talk it out with people. Right. Um. <coughs> uh, I would say that uh, the, the challenge is that FI doesn't the reality about public policy is the devil is in the details. And you want public policy to be as least subject to mission creep and as small and as time frame aware as possible um, in order to make good policy. FI is going to say, here's what I know needs to be done. Everybody needs to be healthy and have access to good health care at low cost. Everybody needs that. Everybody needs that. Well, okay, that may be a good vision for a utopia, but it's not anything to begin discussing public policy with. Because the problem is never an inherency-based one. People don't generally disagree on the problem. They may disagree on how it's phrased. They may disagree on the cause of the problem, but um, they don't necessarily disagree upon the problem. I don't think there's anybody out there who, who says, I actively want it to be harder and more expensive for people to get health care. You know, there's nobody who's saying that, right? 
So then, since we agree on the nature of the problem, in general, policy prescriptions need to be specific about a specific kind of mechanism that the government can apply that'll do something very precise and nothing else. Uh, what happens is Congress, because everybody can kind of agree something needs to be done about healthcare, they take an FI approach and go, okay, well, let's solve this problem, FITE style. It's an FI approach because with TE approach, they realize we need to make every tool be itself and nothing else. Let every tool be itself. I don't need my hammer to have attached to it a screwdriver and sanding paper and stuff like that because then it's not as good a hammer anymore, right? It's just, it's a fucking multi thing. So, uh, well, anyone who feels like FI is being shit on, that's why I always have to designate myself as the champion of FI. The amphibian. You operate well on dry land, but do what I can okay to, uh, you know, support my FI brothers and sisters and try to bring out the best in them because. More people need to actually experience a healthy FI user who's actually uh, using that tool the way it's meant to be used. You know. Well, okay, fine. I, I get that in talking about it. But when we're talking about it in public policy, we're talking about where it's not, in my gym, right. in my opinion, appropriate. The fact is we should use FI, FI deliberation, FI calculi, FI ways of thinking when making decisions that involve deliberation about people in our lives or our relationships and shit like that, which is most of what we actually do, okay? This is not passive aggressive, passive aggressiveness. No. Am I being passive aggressive? No. He's, and you're right that we're talking about a particular example of poor FI usage. Right. I'm saying that, look, no. AOC... AOC AOC is almost certainly an FI user, not an ENFJ. Although, I mean, ENFJs might do that kind of shit, but she's off the rails. She's probably ESFP. Um, Dawson K, I've done that. I watch Criminal Minds. Not better off. Just shouldn't be in leadership. Is it just me, or does AOC literally look batshit insane like her eyes? NI plus TI conspiracy theories. Eric is sometimes actively aggressive. Though. Yeah, I'm usually not passive aggressive. I'm, I'm aggressive or, you know, pleasant. Yeah, aggressive. I'm passive aggressive. Right. Together, we're active and passive aggressive. A perfect recipe. A triple. If I stay in your lane, as they say, I'm INFP and I think AOC is a nut job. Well, it's because you're not ESFP. No, you're not being PA, just straightforward. Thanks, Dark Star. Tim, okay, I can agree with that, Fiji Katrina says. What's Trump? Trump, I think, is an ESTP. I'm also INFP, I feel attacked. I'm attacking you with my words about your feelings. ESTP, I agree. I saw Eric wrestling a dollar away from a homeless man in town. I was not a homeless man. I was a dollar thief. Uh, that's what I think. SJW cringe. I don't know. Trigger me more. Oh, okay. Uh, calm down, boys. Lol, what? Trigger me more. Trigger me more. Everybody come in. Trigger me more. Trigger me more. Trigger me more. Trigger, 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 trigger. Okay. How would you like me to trigger you? I will trigger your button. Gonna button your trigger. Gonna. Finger your button with my trigger mutton and I'm gonna trigger you more. AOC has FI low in her stack. Okay. Um, you think lower than four? What's Joe Rogan? ESTP, I think. Thank you, Spacey, says Lady Green. You're welcome, Lady Green. Says Spacey. No. Says Matt Robert he Did he just say Loki is an INFP? I thought he was an INFP. I'm talking about Loki in the movie, not Loki from the Norse mythologies of war of yore. Black. INFP sounds like 
they'd be much more apolitical. INFPs are more apolitical than ESPs, probably. Introvert Thinker says, says Joe Bergen's an ESFP. He might be. I agree. His TI didn't seem very good. Opinion on honking. Honk. Uh, Spacey, you got a thought on honking? Oh. Um, honk. Honestly, guys, the world was honked from the start. So. Mm. Honk Rog away. Rogan is annoying. He's like, any guy you've ever gotten high with who starts talking about shit he thinks is deep, but it's very basic level stuff. More than a kernel of truth to that statement there, Hero Lamb. More than one kernel. I'd say a whole cob's worth. Well, I think people always remember that there's one aspect to Rogan's podcast where, like, as organic as it looks, it's kind of like a TV show, and he's like, He's, he's trying to be a good host, the, yeah, okay. and he likes to. He has to act like really right. excited about what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, I, I'm sticking with the ESTP. I think maybe I'm not sure. I'm not I sure think, he's the ESTP. I think he's either an ESTP or like an ENFJ, maybe. Um, um, extrovert in that quadra. Um, and why does Joe shit on Eddie Bravo so much? Uh, okay, Joe's CI comes out when Eddie is on. I I I, I stick with the ESTP. Um, but I do agree, sort of, 25% true about here around instead of a full, full cob, we're going to go 25% of cob. Martial arts is yawning. Martial arts, he's the one who was here the other day saying yawn and things like that, and, and people would point out, like, um, you aren't chained to the bedpost here? All right, hello? Did you notice that you actually have the capacity to come and go as you see fit? But I do appreciate that even though you are incredibly bored and this sucks so much ass, you are doing me the favor of sticking around to tell me that you're bored so that I can adjust approximately, you know, appropriately. Make some sort of change to entertain you better martial arts. Facey, what can we do to make martial arts happy? Because, you know, it really, I am always, I always say the customer is always right. So if martial arts is yawning. That means I must be boring the living fuck out of him right now. What can I do more exciting? How about this? Knife! Martial arts, why are you bored? Is there anything you want to talk about? Is there anything... Are you really bored? Is there anything more intellectual, maybe? Are you having girl troubles? Uh, do we need... Is this conversation too lowbrow for you? Do you need to talk to me about... Nocturnal emissions again, and what it means. It's not it. No, you're not. You don't have cancer of the penis. Oh, he loves me. Wonderful. I understand why Rogan gets hate, but let's be honest, 85% of people who talk shit about him have been introduced to so many people and ideas because of his variety of guests. Probably true. What are the best Enigro sources? I don't know. There's not, there's not much to Enigro beyond just the surface level. It doesn't have a mechanics. Estes. These have a tendency to do things that they see as harmless but that other people get easily offended by and when people start hating them, they punch blindly back. EST what? what what's next to E? Nothing. Uh, watch Joe Rogan's own analysis on the Christ church shooter and feel the pain. Well, I mean, I express pain when I something sad as well. Hello, everyone. I'm enjoying brunch with my beautiful wife. It's tremendous. God bless America. Mega KFC. Hi, Donald. Thanks, Donald. God bless America. Yeah. I appreciate your enthusiasm for KFC. Matt Ravahi. Lol. Phage Katrina. ESTJs for their weaknesses usually plan things a little better. They would choose to get rid of Twitter faster than an ESP would, recognizing it as dangerous. Um, but they'd also get rid of a bunch of shit that's not dangerous. My dad's an ESTJ with his NI polar, the crazy ass shit he thinks, I tell you. He cooked, cooked, it, cooked up quite a cockamamie tale of kookiness in regards to how supposedly people had compromised the security again. It was a false alarm this morning, but I got another call with, yeah. I've heard of the rapper XXX Temptation. He's dead. He died. 
he died of a bullet to the head, I believe. Um, it's one of those diseases that, you know, one minute, minute you're fine, it just sneaks up on you, and next thing you know. Uh, why are you typing Trump as ESTP instead of ESTJ? He doesn't seem like an ESTJ to me. He's process oriented. He's not an ex executive type, really. He's, I mean, I guess he's sort of executive. He's, he's following through on his plans, and but they're not good plans. There's no good TE in anything. It's irrelevant. So it's, his basic model is, I'll do something, and it'll, I'll do something about the thing, and it'll help someone. Just as long as we're doing shit, it's fine. <coughs> dance break, says martial arts. It's a dance break, dance break time. Dance break, says martial arts. It's a dance break, dance break time. Dance break. Oh, Louis yeah. Joe has got his cabinet stuffed full of frogs. He's forgotten about his lunchtime date. Helen's leaving that to comments on his blog. Jonah's running really very way past late. They say neurotics link up to identity towards all of the things that they do, disregarding whatever is news in favor of much more familiar clues. Try and find it be calling, but it can't be heard. Uh, that's what he's talking about. Martial arts wants me to play this song. Cause yeah, that's what he's talking about. What he's talking about. Ashley muttered to herself and to Colin. Ben Topher won't forget that this is lunchtime dinner. Ellen's got him represented in her cold walk while Jonah learns the antonym. They tell me no rod itself congregate with the neck. We're having the same nerves that they great. The blood be a stick, the shouty shrill and dive great. He's the ill considered words that they seem to relate. Try and find it, be calling, but it can't be heard. This side of the hill. Do you recognize Pacey singing in the chorus? It might be stalling down and it is time to pay the bill. Yes, yeah, Pacey singing in the chorus. Try and find it, be calling, but it can't be. All right, so that's the end of what I've got so far. Um, Believe whatever you want about Trump, but believe this, good sir, madam. I've got 17 ducks, and I've got to sell them by this evening. So if you're in the market for 17 ducks, come over right now, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll sell them to you for $5 a piece. Rap to the rhythm of the boogity beat. Okay, Brian Goss, why do people get so triggered by SJWs getting triggered? Well, it's triggering. Um, imagine an SJW's triggering being a second level of triggering on a booby trap of a mine that will blow up. Now, imagine your triggering is the second trigger on the two triggering booby trap. There's the explanation. I'm not gay, but I would have sex with Joe Rogan. His head looks like an egg, which I like. That's a nice comment, AK Reborn. I really enjoyed that. That's really. Really, you know, it's, it's honest, good, heartfelt, meaningful. Oh, Gary. Ram Ranch really rocks. I've got a Ram Ranch in my pants, and let me tell you, it really rocks. Trump dyes his hair with ketchup. True story. That sounds like the beginning of a rap, Susie. Uh, one wonders. One does. Where one wanders, one wonders where one wanders when one wishes wanderlust. One wonders where one wanders when one wishes wanderlust. Good to see some INFP attention. Good to see you, Hoster. Good to see endocrine. Good to see you, endocrine junkie. And good to see that you've kicked your endocrine habit, moved on to cigarettes. Much healthier. Wanderlust blunders. It's actually wanderlust. Okay. Wanderlust blunders. Knock me asunder. And squander the luster of yesterday's lunch. That would be a good line. Can you type my crazy uncle? 
He's crazy. That's his type. He is obsessed with houseplants and has them all over his house and reads books about them obsessively. He smokes, drinks, and believes conspiracy theories. He talks a lot. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. INFJ. Uh, INFP. ISTJ. Some sort of I. Eyes are the crazy ones. All the crazy ones are eyes. Hmm. Adrian B, you're right. INTP. Yeah, probably INTP. Could be ISTJ, though. Eric, what do you think about Einstein being an INTJ and not an INTP? He has lots of quotes and life events that seem to lean more to INTJ. Uh, he, seems, he has laughing eyes, though. That's the surest sign you're not an INTJ. You have laughing eyes. I've got laughing eyes. Ha, 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 ha. See them laughing. Oh. What is the title of this stream supposed to mean? It's supposed to mean that the thing is, an INFP is going to try to seek justice by fully understanding every element of the system. That actually understanding the person's motivations, what was really going through their head, why they did what they did, and actually understanding them, that will solve the problem entirely. That if you have complete understanding of the person who's victimized you, you won't feel any anger or resentment towards them. You just feel pity for them. Well, that might be true, but criminal justice is a societal matter, not an interpersonal matter. So, be ye, be ye, Now, Jung's an INFJ. Just like your mama's face. Indeed, it's just like that. He never made a system. Susie's right about that. He just talked in metaphor with magical things like Collective unconscious. Holy shit, that hits me hard. I'm INFP. Well, MEPS, that's what I do. I hit hard. I don't pull punches for INFPs. When I talk about things that are damp and things that are moist, I deliver the goods. You are going to be sopping wet. This is like the log ride at Disneyland. You are going to end this ride sopping motherfucking wet. Basie knows. He's sitting in the splash zone. Man, it's I'm like a Gallagher you, show. You don't. You don't get out of one of these live streams with dry panties. Mm. Gallagher show front row. Here comes the, the hammer and here comes the fruit. Hitting hard with laughing eyes. Deadly combo. Thanks, Ahmed Esam. That's what I'm going to have. I'm going to get a big bumper sticker for my car. Hitting hard with laughing eyes. Let's see what people say. They're going to really be impressed with me. Just call my channel the Law of Ride. <laughs> that is a good name for a channel. Ooh. Oh, whoa. Oh. I have explosive diarrhea. Dr. Skeletor. How can you have diarrhea? You don't even have any organs or meat. You're just skeleton bones. Dave Kepke is checking in from Puerto, Panasco, Sonora, Mexico. David Kepke, be on high alert for kidnapping drug cartel people. All they do all day long in Mexico is kidnap Americans and sell them to drug cartels. And then the drug cartels kill them and plant drugs in their body and hey. ship their bodies back to America to be buried. Have fun, David. Stay safe. Make sure you're packing heat. Right. Basically, I said the same, the same thing. He said, so much nicer, so much better FE out of this guy. He's like an INP who's got a jar full of FE polish and a rag and just smoked like an eight ball of meth. <laughs> If that's what, if that's what, if somehow you know you get caught by the Russian Secret Service or whatever, because you're a spy, and they lock you in a Russian prison, and they force you to consume an eight ball of meth, and give you a jar of Effie polish, this is what you want to do with it, and you're going to end up polishing Effie, whether you feel like it or not, you're just going to be like freaking out on it. Uh, scratching with a knife. This is a fish knife, so this part isn't sharp. This is just a hook puller and whatever. It's good for scratching the inside of my ear. It's dull. What type is most represented in your stream in your opinion? I think INFPs and INTPs probably. Maybe some INFJs here and there. Uh, you know, I'm going to get some ENFPs. ENFPs probably show up fairly often. I'm going to get some occasional ISFPs. I, I get a few ISFPs. I'm trying to debone my ears. That's right. 
And periodically, um, other people get wax buildup. I get bone buildup in my ears. I make the best breakfast known to man. Wow. It must be pretty good. Does it include oatmeal? Because I don't like oatmeal. I'm ashamed for admitting my homosexual fantasies. It is a sin in my Catholic religion. Only the priests can have sex with other men. Um, I'm pretty sure the nuns can, too. I think it's fine for nuns to sleep around with whoever they want. I'm pretty sure that's one of the rules. I love hash browns, says Supernova. Do you think he's lying? No. Who okay. doesn't love hash? Right. Uh, just, just making sure. Just checking. Earbone called the auditory ossicle. If any of the three tiny bones, the middle earbone mammals, they are the malleus or hammer, the incus or anvil, and stapis or stirrup. Well, thanks, Captain Biology. Denny's Grand Slam. Hey, Denny's Grand Slam is fine. I'm not saying anything wrong with it. It's good. I've eaten it plenty of times. But and not the not the number one choice of Denny's. There's other things you can get. You don't know how people eat pancakes. What? Pancakes are not gross. Pancakes are fluffy and delicious. Here's the thing. Oh, here's a mistake you probably make here, Lamb. You probably make the mistake of putting syrup on your pancakes. Come in here. Don't put syrup on your can of pancakes, people. Pancakes are for butter only. Extra butter. Tri triple butter if you need it. But no syrup. My favorite type of cheese is the Tillamook extra sharp cheddar that comes in the orange baby loaf. That's the best cheese you can get, I think, basically. Well, I mean, there's some fancy cheeses. Like, I, this is my Irish Irish uh, cheddar that I like to get periodically. I forget what it's called. It's really good, too. There's other good, really good cheeses, but I really, and for a general purpose cheese, I like that Tillamook extra sharp cheddar. <sighs> this 7-Eleven double gulp of Coke is quite satisfying when you have a day long worth of thirsty work under your belt, like me, out slaving in the fields. You like the white cheddar better? I like the orange cheddar. I like the old school, regular, regular old orange cheddar. Oh, Taylor's here. Hi, Taylor. Hi, how are you? Colby Jack is fine, but not as good as it is. Yeah. Mozzarella is okay. It's boring. Um, provolone, boring. They're boring cheeses. I think provolone... I actually really like provolone. It has to be sharp, though. Just like with any cheese. You can't get mild provolone, because otherwise it doesn't taste like anything. But I like. It I didn't sandwich. even know they had sharp provolone. Yeah. Exactly. You don't know shit about cheese. So what are you talking about? It has, it has sharp mo mozzarella as well? I don't think that mozzarella works that way. It's not meant to be. It's just meant to be creamy. You so know? mozzarella is what provolone usually tastes yeah, soft like. Soft cheeses don't have sharp versions like that. Provolone's as soft as mozzarella. No, it's not. Close. No. Not not even close. Isn't mozzarella... String cheese? Only if you put it into strings. Okay, well, I mean, string cheese is not no, any string soft. Cheese, or... String cheese is like some uh, approximation of cheese made out of like vegetable oil and salt and various <laughs> shit. All right, well, Spacey, likely. Spacey but... has unmasked me in front of everybody here today. It's true. I admit it. I don't really know very much about cheese. I, you, you could you could take me aside privately and tell me that, Spacey, but no, you've got to shame me in front of everybody. It is true. We don't have Waffle House or Huddle House in California, but I've been to both, out of state, and uh, I like Waffle House. Waffle House is cool. Waffle House is like, it's cool. You know, it's 
I wish we did have them here. It's it's like a cheaper version of Denny's that has less table space, more counters, and it's more like 24 hour -y. It feels more 24 hour and less restaurant -y, you know? Have you ever been to a Publix? I don't think so. In fact, I have a, before I go on away from Waffle House, I will tell everybody a story. Right near the beginning of our relationship, when Kimberly and I were in Kentucky, I, they, I expressed how much I was liking Waffle House and talking to her. We were at Waffle House, and what did she do? She stole a Waffle House coffee cup for me. And I was like, I really felt mixed feelings about that because I, I like the cup, but I like the gesture. But, um, See, that sort of stuff in the chat is going to get this demonetized. So I'm going to remove it. You're costing me money, martial arts. Um, I don't mind the smell of parm. I guess I have a weak nose. Well, it depends what kind of Parmesan cheese you're smelling. If you smell some Parmesan cheese in a dumpster, it's probably not... Uh, not very good. It's not that, Hambo. It's not no naughty words. It's stuff that seems like overtly... That sort of thing is like overtly sexual. That's probably going to trigger some fucking uh, YouTube thing. It doesn't... You know... It's There's a different kind of... Uh, cursing in, in humor or cursing in the way that I normally do is different for, from... Um, from... Like explicitly sexualized stuff. Do I get paid a lot for these videos? No. I probably won't make anything off of this video. I know that sometimes people give me super chats, then I get a little bit of money. Super chats, I might get like half of it from, from YouTube. Whatever people super chat, they YouTube keeps half of it. But filmmaking, more beta or TV valuing? Well, filmmaking, I mean, it, it's important to make a distinction between different kinds of filmmaking. There's live streaming like this, which is sort of making a video. There's uh, making a video on a topic, like we sometimes do, you face you or me or whatever. And then there's making an episode of something like Type Police. And then there's making an edited video that's got narration and pictures underneath it. And, and each of those has a different kind of, of function coordination like some are coordinated with some some are coordinated with others people have whole channels built upon changing their genitals some comments probably won't ruin and i'm saying it's going to ruin me i'm saying that uh i've noticed a substantial number of the live streams are not monetizable because probably too much profanity or whatever probably mostly the shit i say but i just if something seems really like YouTube filter triggering, then I might remove it. I didn't remove the guy. I just uh, I just removed his comments. I didn't put him on timeout or anything. I don't think he did anything wrong. I just be precautionary. Uh, how often do you do paid typings? I haven't done a lot lately because don't worry about it. Martial arts, it's fine. Uh, I haven't been making a lot of videos that are conducive to getting people to sign up for typing. So I, what I should do is make make videos about um, about cognitive functions and types and stuff, and be more purposeful in that. And then I'll get for getting more people to sign up for typing. But yeah, Did you come out of the progressive closet yet? I just did. And boy, is it a mess in there. Let me tell you, you progressives will really need to clean that fucker out. Lynch is cool so far, but I haven't seen Twin Peaks yet. That's a long time ago that I was there. Uh, I'm about ready to wrap this up, I think. Any other comments, questions, concerns, complaints, thoughts from Spacey, or meaningful contributions that might, per might, might cause this to go a little bit longer? Mm. Come on, guys. It's only been an hour. You really want Eric to stop already? Yeah. 
It feels like time. The slabs are spoken. The slabs are spoken. I already know what I am, but I could use the strategy and effectiveness. Well, Dark Star, if you'd like to have a type of session with me, I'd be happy to talk to you about whatever. Type of session is not just type of session. People sometimes use me as like a life coach or just they want to ask me questions about cognitive functions, but unless they may already know their own type. People want to, I don't know, whatever they want to talk to me about. Yeah, don't be afraid. You know, it's like there's this, Sign up today. this sort of FE thing that says, I can't possibly pay for this and just say, I just want to sit around and I just want to chat directly with you about what I want to talk about, bro, about various topics. But that's totally fine. That's what you want to do. Doesn't matter to me. It's always interesting, whatever it is. Some of them are more fun than others. Some of them are more challenging than others. Be the Pasadena County Indian. I am an Indian. I don't want to sing the Batman theme. Bubble guns, bubble gum slushies are awesome. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to eat plenty of